first of all, I just I grew up in the Texas panhandle and still here in Perryton, Texas. And uh, when I was almost 10 years old, uh, my mom took us kids. There were five of us to a Baptist revival. And that was where I heard the gospel for the very first time. And I, that night, I believed it. I believed that God sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me so that I could live forever in heaven with him. And so I walked in awe that night and accepted Christ. And um, and it was it was amazing. I sensed a very loving presence drawing me to that altar that night. And um I was baptized the following Sunday and but then after that the strangest thing happened. Um life just went on as usual and um and I realize now looking back it's because I didn't understand what happened to me that night. Uh Second Corinthians five seventeen says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a brand new creation. And I didn't have a clue that the same girl that walked into that church that night, uh, that I wasn't the same girl that walked into that church that night. I was a brand new Kim walking out of there. But uh, because I didn't know who I already was in Christ and what I already had in him, um I continued uh, living just like I did before, and I can describe that really well. Uh, it was performance-based junkie. I Everything I did revolved around trying to earn uh, my love, value, and acceptance. Uh, I was a straight-A student. I was a good girl. I hardly ever got into trouble. Um, I was a people pleaser and, um, that just, I, I, and so nothing, not hardly anything in my outward life changed from that night. So, um, I, I, I grew up very insecure, very full of fear, and uh, again, just trying to to please people. And um, I I was I was unhappy, and I ended up getting married uh, the summer before my senior year in high school. Um, and I just knew that I was going to live happily ever after with this guy. And uh, but. The thing is, is I was still I was unhappy and I was unfilled and unfulfilled. And now I realize looking back, it's because I wasn't living who I really was. I, I my mind, Romans 12, 2 says that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so my mind hadn't got the memo of what was true about my new spiritual heart in him. And so anyway, um, I, I thought having a child would bring me fulfillment and I was still unhappy. And I thought, well, maybe if I go to college and get a degree and start a teaching career, that that will be when I'll finally be happy. And I did all of those things and I was still unhappy and unfulfilled. And so I then I started believing the lie that I was unhappy because I got married to the wrong guy. And you can only imagine what kind of behavior those that kind of thinking led to. And I ended up leaving uh, my husband of over 10 years in search of and I believed that there was this perfect man out there that held the key to my happiness. Um, and then two years later, I remarried and I found out that guy didn't hold the cat, the key to my happiness either. Uh, shortly after we were married, I started going through a depression that was so severe. I couldn't eat or sleep. I was teaching high school math at the time. Um, and 
when I finally did go to sleep, I didn't want to wake up. And really, it, it was so bad that I just wanted my life to end. And uh, it was during that time that a friend of mine invited me uh, to an Experiencing God Bible study uh, back in the, it was 1997 mm-hmm. and not, not, not 1997, 1995. And anyway, uh, in the third week of the study, uh, one morning I was doing, uh, my reading, my lesson, you know, real early because I was teaching school at the time and, I'll never forget, I'll never forget it. The words from the page of the study said, uh, God is pursuing, he continually uh, pursues a love relationship with you that is real and personal. And that those words just were alive to me. And, and I could actually feel the presence of God, the, his, his love. It was just like warm, uh, love. Just, it just melted me that morning. And, and one of the things I couldn't believe is that that love was free. That, I mean, he loved me regardless of all of the wrong things I had, had, had done. And he was pursuing me. And so I wished I could say from that point on, everything was great. But sadly, that marriage ended uh, a little over two years later. And so <clears throat> Wesley, my son, and I moved back in with my parents. And I, I'll never forget, I, I got down on my knees and I said, God, would you put the man of your choice into my life? I, I can't seem to, I can't seem to do this on my own. And I was pleasantly surprised, um, that he shone the spotlight on Stephen. And I knew Stephen as an acquaintance, but I never, I never looked at him in that way. But after I prayed that prayer, uh, God just, he just put us together and, um, we ended up getting married about 10 months later and uh we knew we knew that God put us together and so we started seeking him and uh getting involved in church and I actually uh got involved with the youth and I was I was I really what happened was I went to work for God um I and honestly, I got burnt out. I, even though I was doing all these things, working with the youth and, uh, in a prayer group and just involved in so many different things, I, um, still felt like everything I was doing wasn't enough. And, um, shortly after that, I, I, I started having health issues and, um, and I prayed healing scriptures and I was believing God for physical healing. And I remember about two, two years later, just throwing up my hands and just saying, God, I have done everything I know to do and nothing is changing. If anything good is going to come out of this, you're going to have to do it. And I, I can still remember that day sitting there was like waving a white flag and and just saying, God, take over. And now looking back, I, I know he must have grinned a mile wide uh, when I when I said that, because that's exactly what he was waiting to do. He was wanting to do it all through me. And so um, what he began to pour into me during that time uh, and and just loving on me like I'd never been loved before. Um, he began to show me that he lived in me 24 seven and he was never going to leave me regardless of what I did or didn't do, that it wasn't about my performance for him, but it was about what his, what Jesus did for me on the cross, his finished work and who I already was in him. And so 
learning who I was in Christ, learning that I had been completely forgiven for the sins of my lifetime and that Christ was now my life uh, and that he made me pure, righteous and holy, that I began to live in a freedom and just a rest in Christ and just trusting him to live his life through me and to that to cause me to hear his voice. And so um, it was out of that. Uh, I, you know, I began to learn that I had a brand new heart and I, I didn't I wasn't this wicked and deceitful um, person that that Jeremiah 17, nine verse says, says that we have that's referring to unbelievers those who aren't united with christ and so you know i i just began to hearing hearing reading and learning things that seemed to be um the opposite of what i'd been hearing in church my whole life about how i had to work hard for god and how i had to do all these things to please him and he he did it all. He did it all uh, in from his finished work on the cross. And so it's out of that overflow that of knowing that he has already made me complete in him that I started writing and blogging. And so um, that's that's kind of the background on all of that. Um It's just out of his goodness and his finished work that all of this came about.